So one of the questions I've received a lot over the years is how do you network and connect with industry pros? Now you've probably been told that in the music industry, networking and connections and who you know is really important. And it's true because depending on what connections you have, you can be introduced to better and bigger clients. You can get to know engineers and producers or mixers who are ahead of you, who are higher up in the game and you can maybe learn from them, study under them, help them out. Regardless of the purpose, networking with industry pros can really help you jump forward in your engineering skills and then also in your engineering career. So the good news is it's, it's actually very simple. So I'm not gonna tell you to go to shows or go to networking meetings or even to offer to help these people. I'm gonna tell you how you can start networking with industry pros right away. It's only two words and it just requires a little bit of patience. So before I explain what that is, let me just illustrate it with a couple stories here. So way, way, way back, probably almost 10 years ago now, I was looking for someone to master my material, the music I was producing and mixing. I hated mastering my own mixes. I felt like I always ruined it. I won't get into that now, but I needed a mastering engineer. So I started looking on the backs of CD covers of you know records that I really liked the sound of, and I started actually inquiring to those mastering engineers and asking them you know what their rates are. And for a few of them, I actually did some gave them some projects. I hired them to master some of my stuff. And I came across Troy Glessner, and I started sending all of my stuff to him to master because the results that came back were just exactly what I was looking for and it was consistent and it was fast. So I kept sending him all of my mixes, no matter what project I was working on, to him to master. And I would either pay him directly or I would get the, the artist or the band I was working with to pay for that mastering. So fast forward like four or five years down the road, I knew that Troy had connections with Tooth & Nail Records and Salt State Records. And I thought that I could do a great job for those bands. That was kind of the next jump up for me. So again, I had been sending him work for four to five years. So I finally decided, you know what, I'm just gonna ask Troy if maybe he can put a good word in for me. And he agreed. He sent an email to one of the guys at Tooth & Nail Records and a few months later, it wasn't right away, but a few months later or later that year, I landed the mixing project for the band Forevermore. And that introduction and just landing that mix project opened up a lot more opportunity for me. And let me tell you another story from a different angle. So again, way back around that same time, I was working with uh, an up-and-coming metalcore band. I really liked their stuff. Uh, and the demos that they would send me before the recording sessions were like really good. Like I'm talking 80%, even maybe 90% of what a finished record would sound like. And those were the demos they were doing at home because they were home recording enthusiasts, a couple guys in the band. But regardless, they still wanted that little extra bit of quality. So they came into my studio and I worked with them a bunch over a few years. Now remember, I had heard the quality of their demos. I knew that they were doing their own little home studio operations. So fast forward you know, a few years down the road, maybe five years or less, I was working on the seventh Silverstein record and I needed an assistant engineer to help take on some of the guitar and bass tracking duties. So thinking back through my connections, you know, who do I know that I would trust that has the attention to detail, the ear for performance, for tone, for tuning, all that stuff that you know that I could feel confident in handing the guitar and bass tracking over to this person knowing that it was gonna be up to the standards that I set. I ended up reaching out to and choosing the vocalist for that band I just told you about, the band who, you know, this guy could get demos, or really not even demos, he could do recordings that were 90% as good as mine in his home studio, but was still coming with his band to record with me. And I think that's how he learned a lot, kept getting better, better at his own craft. And lo and behold, because I had heard the quality, I knew this guy, I knew what he was capable of. I ended up recruiting him to be the assistant engineer on the Silver Scene record and get his name on that credit. I've got more stories like this, but what's the point I'm trying to make? In both of these scenarios, the networking happened with the exchange of money for a service. So here it is, the secret to networking with industry professionals is to pay them. And the best way to get something that you want is to give something first. And you might have heard people explain that to you and say, you know, if you want to reach out to someone and connect with someone ahead of you, an influencer, a mentor, then you need to be of value first, so offer something valuable. But I think the mistake a lot of people make is that they try to offer services. So you might try to reach out to someone and say, hey, like if you need someone, if you need someone to do your mix prep, I'll do it for you. If you need someone to do your drum editing, like I'm happy to do some of that. Or can I come and be an assistant at your studio? And here's the thing, I've been on the other side of this. When, when you get these requests a lot, you, it's often more work for, for that professional 
to bring you in, to train you, to help you understand what they need and you cycle through these people, it's more work. So that, that is not really offering value, at least at the first stage, because it's actually creating more of a burden for them if they were to agree to that. Whereas, you know, everyone likes to get paid for what they do, right? It was only through paying Troy Glessner for mastering for a number of years that he got very familiar with my work, with my quality, and he felt confident enough in my track record to refer me to Tooth & Nail Records. And because that band I worked with that paid me over and over again, even though they could do stuff almost as well at their home studio, you know, that ended up down the road leading to me hiring this guy to get credit on a big name record. So if you want to connect with someone, start finding a way to pay them. There's no barrier there. You're offering like the most concrete form of value in the form of money right up front to start networking and connecting with that person. Now, it doesn't mean you're gonna get something back right away other than you know the, the good product or service that they're providing you, but at least now you've, you've got over that barrier of getting the introduction. They know who you are. You never know where that's gonna go. Even in this business with the online courses, almost everyone I've hired was originally a student of one of my mixing or recording courses, and that's how I got introduced to them. That's how I heard their work and you know, learned about their expertise, and then they end up working for me, receiving value back in the form of payment. I see this principle at work all the time. The key is just to not be so cheap. Be willing to put some skin in the game. You know, Be willing to pay to play to get access to that next level. It's gonna speed up the process a lot more than just trying to like grind it out and hustle your way into these circles of people, you know, just paying them, you know, look on their websites, find if there's something that would be valuable to you that you could pay them for, and then make that initial contact, that initial introduction. I could go on with more stories of how this plays out, but the challenge for you right now is to think of where are you maybe being a little too cheap and where could you pay to get access and start networking and connecting with the people that you need to connect with to move your career, your life, your skills forward. Think about it, drop a comment below if this resonates with you. If you're not on my email list yet, I've got a free gift for you. It's called The Five Surprising Truths About Producing Heavy Music That Slams. These are five tips and five production secrets that I've learned the hard way over 10 years of making records. And these are things that if you implement them, they're gonna make a big difference in your rock and metal and hardcore recordings and mixes right now. So that's at metalrecordingguide.com. Grab the free PDF, get on my email list. I'll send you a lot more free content. Otherwise, please like this video, drop a comment, let me know what you thought, subscribe to this channel, and we'll talk to you next time.